Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. Do we have a great fish room tour for you today? We are going to be revisiting Rick's fish room. Rick is a GCCA member. We were there about a year ago. In this video, we are gonna be getting an update on some of the really cool fish that he has. A lot of them have grown larger. They've had babies. He's gotten some new fish in. He's got some rare fish there that we weren't able to see last time. I think you're gonna really enjoy it. Now, this is one of the cleanest, most well-organized fish rooms I have ever seen. If you want to see the systems that he's running, how he does water changes and filtration, definitely check out the original fish room video that we did. I will put that in the upper right-hand corner as well as in the description below. It gives a lot of insight in what it takes and how his fish room is set up. We have recently done a lot of fish room tours. I love doing them because it helps give us ideas of how we could run our fish tanks and our fish rooms and get ideas for stocking ideas for different types of tanks. I will put those in the description below in case you want to check out some more really cool fish room tours. I hope you enjoy this one, so stay tuned. So this is Rick's fish room when you first walk in. You can see here, now this is one part of the fish room. There's a smaller part on the other side of this wall. We're going to take a look at some of the fish, not all of them. Uh, here we've got some vieja. These were the fish that you see when you first walk into the basement. We're not quite in the fish room. These are the larger tanks that were in the main area. Again, if you want to see a lot more of this fish room, I highly recommend check out the first fish room tour that we did about a year ago where we go over a lot of the systems in place. It's very interesting because this fish room is very well thought out, very well organized, and I think a lot of us can learn quite a bit from how this fish room was developed and how, how it's managed. So these are some vieja, really cool fish. It was interesting watching them throughout the afternoon. These are fish we did not see the first time around. These Tomasicla are quite rare. There's not a lot of information about them on the internet other than they are from Mexico all the way down into Panama uh, and some of the river systems. They were really cool fish. I spent a lot of time watching this tank. They get quite large. Uh, they might get up to anywhere between 12 to 14 inches with females staying slightly smaller. But I really enjoyed the colors. It's such an unusual fish. Like I said, I'd only seen them one time before and that was in this fish room a year ago. And I quite frankly didn't remember them all that well. And when I came in, uh, they had gotten larger and more colorful. Now, one thing, uh, this is a fish that, again, it's quite rare. He doesn't have any fries, so you know there's really not any use in contacting him, trying to reach out to see if he's got any, because at the time of this video, there were none. This is an aggressive fish. As you can see, there are some bite marks in some of the tails, but it's one of those fish where if they can, uh, if they can be bred and if he can get them to breed, I think they're gonna be pretty popular in the hobby. Now we come over here and we have another 125 gallon fish tank. These are Frontosa, definitely a more common fish but the Lake Tanganyikan fish have a special place in my heart, and I like these fish quite a bit. They're not super active, as you can see. Uh, they just kind of hang out, and they're, they're just really cool looking fish. Now, here we have another 125. These are more vieja, similar to the ones we saw in the previous fish tank. The ones that we saw previously were a lot larger. These ones are a little bit smaller. There was a lot more in this 125. At this age and at this size, they were getting along fine. If you really like these fish and want to see them in their full colored up stage as adults, definitely check out the video Jason's Fish Room I did recently. I will put that in the description below, but if you really want to see these fish pop and full of, full of color, they look amazing as they get older. And Jason had some really, really nice ones in his fish room when we were there. Now here we've got, I think this might have been one of my favorite tanks. And there were a lot of cool tanks in this fish room, but this one in particular, I spent probably the most time looking at these fish. These are Severum, so they're not terribly uncommon, but what I liked about them was just the way they interacted with one another. They were not terribly aggressive towards one another. There was about, I would say, somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to 10 in this 125 gallon tank. And what we really can't appreciate is just how large they were in this tank. The largest males were were very big somewhere in the neighborhood of at least eight to nine inches and what's interesting about the severum is they also get rather tall and somewhat thick bodied 
but they don't move real fast. As you can see here, they're kind of a calming fish. In some ways, sort of like angelfish. They're just obviously a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker. We actually did a species profile on Severums before. I'll put that in the description below in case you want to get some more information about them. It's cool because they come in all different types of colors. There's red shoulders, there's gold, there's red golds. There's all kinds of different ones. Uh, then you've got the standard greens and these. But really interesting fish. I think if there's a downside to them, it can be that sometimes they might get a little aggressive towards one another or con specifics, even if they're different colors. Uh, the other thing is they love to eat plants, all kinds of plants. So if you really like Severum and you really like planted tanks, sometimes that doesn't work out so well because of their, their desire to eat plants. And we've found in our fish room, they eat everything. I even put hornwort in the fish tank before and they ate the hornwort, they'll eat duckweed, which I suppose is a good thing if you really don't want duckweed in your fish tank, but they do eat pretty much everything. And they're easy to feed, easy to care for, very gentle fish. They tend not to do too much damage to anybody else or really care about the other fish in the tank. Now this next tank I thought was really cool. There's a couple different fish here. The first one is a Lake Victorian fish. That's the Pundamilia, uh, that red one in the upper left-hand corner. I like these fish quite a bit. I tend to like Lake Victorian fish a lot. We have some Species 35s in our fish room a while back. I did a species profile on those. And they're kind of similar to these in terms of the way they look. And they're just really pretty fish. And I think the Lake Victorians sometimes definitely don't get the credit they deserve. Uh, they can be aggressive, as you can see here. This Pundamilia is, is not taking any any stuff from the other fish in this tank. Uh, and the other fish in this tank is also really quite cool. And that is tilapia zilli. It's, it's a really cool fish. And I had never seen this fish before coming here to this fish room, but look at the colors. I like it quite a bit. They've got this really iridescent gold and the camera has done a very poor job of picking up on their iridescence. And they've got this nice deep red color under their bodies. They look moderately aggressive, but not overly so. They weren't really chasing one another. They were probably interacting more with the Pundamilia in the tank than each other. But when they were flaring, they looked absolutely amazing when they put their fins full out. And not only do their bodies have that gold kind of iridescence, but their fins do as well. And these fish have been found in Africa. And what's interesting is they are starting to pop up in various locations within the United States as well. They are a very hardy fish. And as you can see that these ones are still a little bit on the small side, they will grow larger. And often when they do, they lose a little bit of their color, but these ones are really quite beautiful. And in this tank, we have some Hercules Labradins. Now, this fish is not quite as colorful as some of the ones that we've seen so far. They've got kind of a brownish gold tint to them. They are in a, I believe they were in a 40 gallon breeder in this fish tank, but you can see when they get in the right light, they're, they're actually quite pretty, but maybe not the, the fish that would stand out the most unless you really get in. Like you see this large male here looks pretty nice. Uh, this is Ceratheridon caroli. These fish were found throughout the fish room. This is actually a care species, which means that it is endangered. And so one of the things that we try to do at the Greater Chicago Cichlid Association is we have a CARES program that allows members to breed these fish and they get extra BAP points. This Ophthalmotilapia nasuda, this is an absolutely stunning fish. It is from Lake Tanganyika. It is a feather fin. We recently did that fish room over at Jason's house where he had some adults that were absolutely stunning. And if you really want to see them in their full beauty and full color, Again, that's a fish room tour you're going to want to check out because these fish were quite a bit larger. And when they get larger, their fins, uh, the all their fins get a lot longer. It's just, it's, it's really cool. The yellows get much, much deeper. This is definitely a fish. If you're into Lake Tanganyikans, uh, it's an awesome open water fish. That would be a great addition to just about any Lake Tanganyikan tank, provided you've got the space. This was also an interesting fish that caught my eye, this uh, microgeophagus. This is not your typical Bolivian ram. And so as I, as I first saw it, I knew it was ram-like, but what's interesting is the 
color is not quite the same as the Bolivian Ram. It's got a kind of a lot of red. This one tended to look a lot more black and white, which I thought was pretty interesting. You could see those nice tall dorsal fins, which is pretty cool. Uh, in this tank, we had some Thrichthys. Now, this is a fish that is related to the Firemouth, which is a very common fish. I also have in my fish room something called Thrichthys mechalopinus. They look very similar to this. This was an interesting fish. It seemed to have a little bit more yellow. Uh, the red you see there right below the mouth. It was definitely a pretty fish, very similar to the ones that we have in our fish room, but a different species, but cool nonetheless. This next tank was also very nice. These were some koi angels. Again, these are not fish that are super uncommon like some of the other ones that we've seen, but I just like looking at them. They're a relaxing type of fish to look at. We had koi angels a number of years ago. I think we had about a dozen or so in a 75 gallon tank and they were a real joy. You can see here, these are really pretty fish. Koi angels are probably some of my favorite of all the angel fish, and they really do look amazing. If you've got a, a large planted tank, like a 125 or a 150 tall, uh, definitely a cool fish. And you can see here, they're getting along pretty well. Would love to see these guys breed and have the babies wind up in the club. Uh, the koi angels are quite desirable, easy to care for, relatively easy to feed, especially as they get older. Uh, they tend to be a lot stronger in terms of water parameters. Now here we have some goodyids. Now one of the things that Rick does a lot of is he has a lot of these goodyids. I don't show a lot of them. If you want to see more of them, definitely check out the first fish room tour that we did. I love these fish. They kind of reminded me of a Java rice fish, only they were much larger. So these fish were easily the size of a, oh, not quite the size of a molly, but surely like almost platy size, maybe a little bit longer, but they had the pretty blue eyes. Would love to have some of these in our fish room at some point. They're a live bear. Uh, if you're really into live bears and goodyids, we did a fish room tour of Andrew Pierkowski's fish room. He really specializes in goodyids and, and fish that are similar and a lot of interesting fish, a lot of rare fish. And here we've got some Crebenzas. These are really nice looking fish, nice colors. Uh, we, when we did Mario's fish room not that long ago, he had some really, really amazing Crebenzas in that, in, in his fish room uh, tank that was absolutely, I mean, probably one of my favorite fish in his fish room. And then here we have some gold ocelotus. And this is, again, this is not an uncommon fish, but I just love them. We have them in our fish room. We've done a species profile on them before, Lake Tanganyikan fish. They're really pretty, but they've got a ton of attitude, uh, especially when they start breeding. It is a fish that will actually attack. You know, if you put your hand in the fish tank, they will attack you. So that, this is Rick's fish room. It's an update. If you enjoyed this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.